What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TW Motorsports and today I'm doing it. You guys have been asking for it. Um, I've decided I'm going to do it and we'll talk about why I'm going to do it and um, the reasons why I got the, what I got, but I'm putting a console in this truck. So you guys have asked for it for a long time. You keep every, I, I bet in every video I post on this truck, somebody says, put a console in it, put a console in it. But honestly guys i really didn't I, I for one a dark colored console like this is really hard to find the other thing is i don't really care for the consoles that came out in these body styles so the the 99 to 02 had a different console it was a two-piece compared to the 03 and up which had a single uh, or a one piece but uh, i just couldn't find what i was looking for and i'm pretty picky as far as like in condition and whatnot so when you go to a salvage yard, they're all ragged out. People take the doors off, they get rained on, they get sun faded. So, um, as you may or may not know, I've been looking for a console for my white truck out there because the uh, centerpiece is all busted in it. And this one is actually cracked too. You can see a small crack there. Now it does have the original one because it's carpeted, but the one in my truck out there is tan. And so I've been looking for a tan one like crazy and I found one or a guy said it was tan. So. And you can see I have a tan one. This one's all ragged out too, but this is what I found. Now, when I got to his house, he told me, like I said, it was tan, but it's obviously not tan. And uh, well, that's tan and this is not tan. So he, and, and I will, I'll say this, when I went into his garage, honestly, it does look a little tan um, with low lighting. It's kind of hard to tell because I've, I've, I've seen several of these in pictures and I thought they were tan and people were like, no, they're gray. So I'm like, well, I really don't really don't need a gray one because, well, gray doesn't match anything. I didn't want to put that in my white truck because it has tan. And then I got to thinking I really don't want it in this truck because it's not gray. Well, I was looking at this car. It was actually a Suburban, which is why it has the radio entry on the back. You know, these came with pockets. In, mo in some of the trucks and they're really hard to find with the pockets and they actually discontinue that pocket otherwise I would have one but I was looking at this truck and it had a two-tone interior and so it got me thinking like you could see I got the bezel because eventually we're gonna do a double dent swap you could see the bezels dark but I also got the glove box which you need for this swap and you also need that bracket that's down there in the floor and you need the um, bolster the knee bolster because otherwise you'd have to trim yours so i got to thinking like how would this look in my truck because in this suburban it looked really really clean so what i've decided to do is we're going to do some two-tone in this truck now uh another reason is like i just think it looks different like every one of these you open it's like all gray or it's all tan and i thought it would look kind of nice so what we're going to do is we're going to try it we're going to see what i think it looks like and if i don't like it i can always take it back out and see if i can find a darker one but um, I'm going to try it. And so the other things I thought is because the dash is going to be two-toned, so it'll be the dark on the top and the lighter gray on the bottom, which I think will look nice with the lighter gray console. I thought down the road, because I am going to do a power window swap. There you guys go. Uh, I've said it. I am going to do a power window swap. When I do the power window swap, I'm going to try to find a dark door panel and I'm going to put the same color at the bottom of the dash right here in this insert. So it'll give it some, just kind of a different look. And then if I ever do anything with the seats, I think I'll kind of put that color into the seat as well. So I think it's gonna look really nice. And like I said, if I get it in here and I absolutely hate it, I'll take it back out. It doesn't bother me a bit to um, put stuff in, take stuff out. This is a pretty easy swap for the most part. Um, there is some wiring and I'm trying to decide, I mean that the radio bezel on this and you guys will see this too. I, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm going to do the tan truck too. I actually have two of these. This one is the dirty one that I'm not going to be using. I have another one, which you guys will see down the road when I do that truck. But I'm trying to figure out, do I want to put this, just leave that in there because it's going to be in the back and you're never going to see it. I think that's probably what I'll do um, just because it's so far back. But we'll see once we get it in there. I, I might kind of go from there. Just see, just, well, I guess we'll see. Haven't really decided yet. Anyway, um, the first thing we need to do is I'm gonna be cleaning this interior. I know it looks probably pretty clean. It needs to be vacuumed, but for the most part, it's pretty clean, but there are some stains that the dark kind of hides. And so once I get all of these seats out, I've never had the seats out of this truck. I've literally vacuumed kind of as far back 
and under the seats as I can, but I've never had them completely out. So chances are there's gonna be some grossness under here. I'm gonna get the seats out. We're gonna shampoo the carpets really well, and then we will go back together with the console and we'll talk about what needs to be taken apart and what all needs to be removed in order to do this. But first, obviously we need to get the seats out. Now GM has a kind of oddball, it, it's almost like a reverse Torx bit that goes in the front and the back to get these seats out. However, if you use a 6.15, you can get the front out and a 11, a 6.11, you can get the rear out. So the front has just nuts and the back has bolts. That is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get the seats out of the way and uh, then we'll take a look at what the carpet looks like. So as you can see, I got the first seat out and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. See the change and this gross, it looks like somebody spilled something here before. So I've been slacking guys. I didn't take these seats out. Normally that's the first thing I do when I buy something, but you can also see kind of how this center seat goes into place. It actually just sandwiches between the seat and the floor. So there's no actual bolts really in it it's all contained by the seat. So this side is now loose. So now all I need to do is take the other side out. I probably will go ahead and take the 10 millimeters out that hold the jack in because when I'm cleaning carpet, I like to have everything out of the way. And this carpet's in really, really good shape. Um, you can, I don't know if you guys maybe can see, there's some stains right here that I've just never addressed and it's always drove me crazy. Uh, I'm pretty picky about my interiors. I like to set in clean vehicles. So uh, for the most part, it's pretty clean, but never did remove the seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the driver's side out. We'll get the console just lifted up and out of the way. And then we'll have a good shot at what the carpet looks like. So in less than like probably five minutes, you can have the entire thing apart. But the other couple things I did was I unsnapped these guys and I unsnapped the kick panel. Now, I'm not as concerned about these panels back here for a couple reasons. One, you're not getting your feet in and out of this all the time, but you can see how gross this area gets. And it also tucks up under there with people's feet. So I'm gonna go grab the vacuum. It's not, it's not terrible guys. It looks halfway decent. Other than those little spots that I see, I don't think we're gonna have to spend a ton of time on this. But if you guys saw me clean the interior of the Tahoe, I now have a, to go with my steamer, my steamer would probably make, it'd probably do the job here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my extractor just because I think some spots like that, my steamer would just take a little too long. So uh, my steamer really excels in like jo uh, the door jams and whatnot. The other thing I wanted to talk about is when I said I wanted to do a two-tone, if you look in the top of these things, they're already two-tone. So for some reason, GM says that after doing studies, they say that when you have a lighter colored top, and a dark colored interior, it looks like it's more open. So that's why these things are like that. It's not because they just had a ton of tan or a ton of lighter colored material. That's why you see a dark colored interior with a lighter roof. Now on the newer stuff, they've kind of went away from that, but back in the day, that's the reason they did that. So if you guys are ever wondering like, why would they do all this in dark and then do the top in that color, that is why. So it's also gonna kind of match that area. So you also may notice that in the garage, I had the center console piece. So I don't know how soon I'm gonna be doing that because the headliner is starting to pull away right by the glass. So at some point I'm probably gonna have the headliner done and I'll probably wait to install that center console then. But I'm gonna go get the vacuum. I won't show you guys that. Now I will, I probably will show you the process of me um, doing the extractor just because, I don't know, to me that's kind of fun to watch to see the nastiness that comes out of this carpet. So I'll go vacuum it first and then I'll start you guys on the extractor. I now have it vacuumed and guys, I'm not using anything. I've got my little cleaner out. I'll list this in the description down below. It's, it does a pretty good job for, for little, little money in my opinion, but I didn't put anything in it other than warm water. And this area here, I'm gonna use purple power on. So purple clean or purple power or whatever. It comes in a purple jug. Maybe it's, I don't know. I think that's what it's called. I'll list it in the description as well. I'm gonna spray down the stain spots quite a bit. And uh, I'm honestly, I don't even know that I'm gonna agitate it. You know, in my Tahoe, I used an agitator brush and I may end up going back and doing that later. Uh, we're just gonna see kind of how good it comes up now.
So if you ever wonder if you're doing any good, look at that water. Now, while it's not as bad as the Tahoe, it um, it's gross. And uh, the big part, I think, right here along that ledge, and then the couple stains, and they're almost completely gone. So I won't bore you guys with any more of this. I just think it's kind of cool to watch that stuff. Uh, I'll give you guys a look once I finish the whole thing. I'll probably go over the seats too, just because, well, I don't know. I'm just going to do it since I got it out. So anyway, I'll show you guys once it's all finished up and then we'll get to the console install. So it's the next morning and I wanted to get all the carpet cleaned um, basically before I went to bed. So I could give the carpet time to dry. Now it's not quite dry, but you can see I have a huge mess here in my garage of pulling all this stuff out. I cleaned all these parts last night. Uh, put some treatment on them that silk dressing by chemical guys. I'll also list that in the description, but the carpet came out pretty good for the most part um, all the stains That were in it came out Which is pretty exciting, but it's still a little damp. So while it's damp I am gonna go ahead and we're gonna start taking off the trim that I'm gonna be replacing so the glove box here the kick panel or the knee bolster on that side uh, in order to do that though, the very first thing we need to do is we need to drop the steering wheel down, put this thing in first gear, and take this outer radio bezel off. So in order to do that guys, if you have a seat in and you can put your foot on the brake, you can pull that down and do it really quick. Obviously I don't, so I'm going to chalk the back wheel and then we'll pull that piece out. Now this isn't too hard to do, just put the key in, you're going to have to put your foot on the brake, pull it down into first gear. I guess that I I can't keep my foot on the brake. Just go around with your fingers and pop this out. Then you can go ahead and put it back into gear. Next thing I'm gonna pull out here is this knee bolster and there's a couple seven millimeters down the bottom. And then it comes out with just those clips similar to um, the way the rest of the dash pops in. Sometimes it's a little tough, especially if it's been there a while. You can see my clips came off, pretty common. One of them stayed in here. So I'll get a pair of pliers and pull that out. Now once we've got that one out, then we can go over to the glove box and start on it. Actually, before I take the glove box out, I'm gonna go ahead and take this rear panel loose. Same, there's two seven millimeters in it. And then I'm gonna take the two sevens out from underneath. So the glove box has several of these seven millimeters along the bottom. Let's see here, one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna get these four. Now, once you open it, there's a couple more. There's two right here. And then there's one right in the center where the actual latch connects. I have to get a swivel. Oh, maybe not. Actually, I can pull this down a little bit. I'm gonna jump out of here. That's it. I don't see any more. Doesn't act like it's quite loose though. Okay. Pull the radio out. I don't see another one. I 
think there might be another one over here because this is pretty tight where the ashtray goes. Oh, no, maybe it's just clipped. Yeah, I don't see any more guys, so I think it's just clipped. Let's see if we can pull it the rest of the way out. There we go. So in the center here, you're obviously gonna have a couple wires to unhook. This thing has three cigarette lighters and then a light. Just twist that and it comes out. And this guy is out of the way. Obviously, I'm going to have to vacuum again because of all the junk that fell out of the dash. I might go ahead and wipe around on it a little bit, make it look a little nicer. At this point, in order to make the console fit, you're going to need this piece. And this is on the front of the console. So if you guys buy a console, make sure that you get this part. Um, we're going to put four bolts in it, and we're going to put those same seven millimeters that we removed um, out of the bottom of the dash while ago so essentially this is what we're doing we're bolting this onto the dash now uh, sometimes you don't have one of these two holes this particular truck has both sometimes you have to drill one side or the other and I'm not I'm not real sure which side it is but this one does happen to have both of them so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bolt this guy into place and uh, then we'll be ready to move our console in. So before we actually put the console in, we need to go ahead and put the glove box up into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now it just snaps in just like the old one did. Uh, it kind of goes up under the dash a little bit and then it snaps in. This thing goes together kind of like a puzzle. So, let's see if I can get it lined up here. That's not good. Got one side lined up. I'm gonna pull this panel off. Maybe make it a little bit easier. I scratched the side of my dash there. Don't do that. This side seems to be lined up just fine. It's the side closest to the door that doesn't want to play nice. There we go. So once your clips are in place, then we can go ahead and start running in our bolts. So if you remember, we had two right here. Then we had several along the bottom. If you just push this in, you can move it back and forth now. My latch is undone. The person I bought it from started taking it out before I got there, so sometimes that's more uh, hurt than good. Maybe I can get to it without. Last one, I actually forgot about this one here. It goes in the center. So we are set. I'm gonna have to go get a Phillips screwdriver and uh, another screw and tighten that up. But now this guy is in place. I wish I wouldn't have done that to my dash, but we got something coming for the dash, so don't worry about that. Anyway, now that we've got this, I'm gonna wipe stuff down, probably vacuum it again, and then we'll see if we can get the um, console slid into where it needs to go. So I was kind of back and forth on this, and I know I don't have it together yet, but 
I, guys, I think it's gonna look pretty good. Now I did, you guys see I scraped the edge of this trying to put this stupid glove box in and sometimes you screw up. I can get some touch up for that, but the downside is I have a crack. I don't know if you guys can see that in the center of the dash, but I'm gonna have to be replacing this dash pad anyway. So once I uh, am ready to do the power window swap because some of the wires go back behind there, I think I'll end up replacing that, but I'm still, I'm still bummed out that I did that. The other thing is the little triangle piece here that um, would match this. I completely forgot, so I'm gonna have to go back. The guy's here local. I'm gonna go back and get those, and that'll kind of complete the look here and make it look like it's supposed to be two-tone. But now at this point, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the console. I'm gonna sneak my wires through and then kind of tuck it up where it needs to go. I went ahead and pushed my wires in here and this foam that's around this is just falling everywhere. It's making me crazy. But what we need to do is slide it forward. We need to get it over the seat brackets. So we kind of go up and it's on the seat brackets on this side. Same thing on this side. So we are in place. pretty good and I should have enough wire here to reach everything that I need to reach and plug in my pod before we plug in this section here there are two 10 millimeter bolts that go back here on each side that's what hooks it to the dash and keeps it from moving now chances are it's probably not gonna move because it is sandwiched around the seat frame but I am gonna go ahead, I did get the two 10 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and slide them in and then we will go get our center section here and plug up at least two of these. Obviously you had three in your other truck or in the other part, but um, this only has two. So I'm gonna plug at least two of these in. The cool thing is they are the same. So it's just plug and play. So I got my center piece here. See if we can, ooh, it's gonna be a close reach. That's for sure. I got one in. I don't know guys. It's gonna be close. Once I got the clear one in, everything fit like it was supposed to, so. Everything comes together like Legos. It's looking good though. All right, now I'm gonna go grab the panel for over here underneath the steering wheel, or the knee panel, knee bolster, whatever you wanna call it, and we'll get into, it into place, and then we can follow that up with um, the radio bezel. Now this part, you could reuse your old one. The downside is you would have to cut this upper corner. Now, I'm not real excited. It looks like somebody had something mounted. You can see I've got two screw holes, but I can live with that for now until I find another one. But this should just snap into place. And then we'll put those two seven millimeters in the bottom, just like we took out of the other. It's looking good. I really wish I had these pieces that went on the corner. I, I didn't even think about that when I picked this stuff up. So I think because I originally wasn't going to use this, but the more I got to thinking about it, the more I thought the colors went. So 
Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead. We'll put it back down in gear. I won't show you guys uh, me putting this back into place. And uh, then we'll get to the seats. I'm going to let the carpet dry a little bit more before I put the seats in. So anyway, you guys won't see that because it will all be in the same video. I know I say that a lot, but I'm also probably going to go over it with the vacuum a couple more times. So at this point, the seats are dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in. Now this one does have a connection on the bottom of it that I'm going to have to hook up. And um, not much. Let's see if we can get them set into place. Now, I'll have we, now all we have to do is just bolt them down. So let's take a look at it all finished up. All the seats are bolted in. I did go ahead guys and put the trim back in before I put the seats in. You really need to do that because this side trim slides under the seat. You might be able to get it in without, but best case scenario, you would wanna put it in before the seat goes in. I didn't show you guys that. Also put those um, kick panels back into place. And I know my, my mats kinda of clash with everything, but they came with the truck and I don't like having no floor mat. Uh, I wish I could find those and maybe the carpet color that would look pretty nice but I'm missing a few little pieces I know that uh, the, tri the little triangle pieces I'm gonna go back and get from him and then there's two little pieces of they're like plastic pins that slide in here I need to get those as well and then there's a and I, I don't think he probably has it but there's a little piece of rubber that goes on the bottom of this that covers those screw holes that I'm gonna get but all the other rubber pieces like for these three uh, pockets here and these two they're all there so um, I think it looks pretty good guys it it doesn't necessarily go with the seats but what i'm thinking is down the road if um i'll have these seats recovered or maybe find another set these are in such good shape that i really hate to mess with them but maybe do the outer side in the color of the top of the dash and then the inside in that same color and i think it's going to look really really nice i and then also when i do the door panels because i'm going to be doing a power window swap and i think that's going to come quite a ways down the road because i want to get the v8 in this thing uh, I'm going to be doing this piece here. I'm gonna have my upholstery guy cover this. Now the panel will look completely different. It'll have the bigger speaker spot, but I'm gonna have this panel done in that same color. So it'll kind of all tie in and it looks different. It's not like every one you've ever seen. You know, everybody likes to buy the darker color and uh, that's honestly why I bought it. And I paid a hundred bucks for it. And that came with this bottom panel and the panel underneath. And this was from a local person. So I'll list in the description if I can find one on eBay. Uh, generally guys though eBay is kind of high on these things so I honestly don't know that I'd look there unless that was like last case you couldn't find one anywhere else so tell me what you think in the comments also I didn't do the double den that's what that guy's for um, that will be coming down the road as well I don't have there's a bucket that you have to have this thing is so dirty on the outside there's a bucket that you have to have behind the radio and that bolts to the dash so what I'm thinking is, I don't know if I'll do that when I do the power window swap because, I don't, can you guys see the crack there? I'm gonna have to replace this top panel. And so I would really like to do all of that at one time. Maybe the top panel, the radio swap, and the power windows, maybe in a, like a, maybe a multi-part video or something. But all in all, I think it looks great. I, I was back and forth. I think my, my big issue is the seats kind of clash in my opinion with it. And it's just because the seats really don't match anything else. I, but I think it looks good. I, I really do. I think once I get something done with the seats and the door panels, it's going to really, really look nice, guys. So let me know what you think. I think I'm gonna wash this thing, but I'm gonna wait till the sun goes down because it is hot. I'm going inside. And uh, if you did like this video, like always, guys, smash that thumbs up button. I will list everything used in the description down below, like always. If you are not subscribed, guys, you have to get subscribed because we are going to V8 this truck. That's right. We're going from the 4.3 to a 5.3. Uh, we already got the rear end in. You saw that in the video prior on this truck. And uh, so we are rolling. We're getting some stuff accomplished. I know I've got a stack of parts laying around for not only this, but the Tahoe. 
a couple things came in on the Trans Am. I still don't have all of it, but it, we are getting there. So guys, stay tuned to see what we work on next.